greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 71, so let's get to it. Episode 71 begins in Ceres Institute where Go receives an email from Project Mew, which tells him to go to the lab which is located near Mount Coronet in the Sinnoh region. Ren wonders what Project Mew is, so Krisa explains what it is, and Professor Ceres then says that Go will try to join the project after he was recommended by Professor Oak. Go smiles here and he looks all smug because he clearly thinks that he is a big deal because Professor Oak endorsed him personally. Even even though Go refused the invitation at first and he only accepted because of Gary. Also I doubt that Professor Oak recommended Go because he thinks that Go is a good trainer or because he thinks that Go is particularly knowledgeable or skilled or because he thinks that Go would be a good asset to the team. I think that Professor Oak was either being nice or he wanted to help Go since Go did say that his dream is to get Mew or maybe both. It's also possible that Professor Oak was just that impressed when he saw that Go has Suicune and thus he recommended Go based on this merit alone. In any case, I don't think that Go should be acting so high and mighty. Ren and Chris are confused when they hear that the lab is near Mount Coronet because they have never heard of a lab that is located here. They don't know that it's a mobile lab that can fly, so it can be anywhere it needs to be. Ash says that they will find out what's up when they get there and Go is perplexed because Ash says that he will go as well. I honestly don't know why Go is surprised by this because he and Ash travel everywhere together regardless of the purpose of the trip. Ash says that he said that he would cheer on Go which is why he is going along. I guess that this is the reason why Go expressed his disbelief so that Ash can once again say that he will be supporting Go. So Ash and Go travel to Mount Coronet and they reach the lab. At first they wonder if they are in the right place because what they see does not look like a lab at all. Because again, this is not a normal lab but they don't know this yet. When they look closer they see that Gary is visiting the lab as well and he is talking to Asahi. Ash and Golden run into Gary when they get closer. Now I love that Gary sees them both and he says oh it's Ash and uh... So Go has to say his name. Knowing Gary he is probably joking and he did not actually forget Go's name but who knows, maybe Go is just that forgettable. Gary says that he heard that Go would be trying to join Project Mew as well and Go says that yes, that is why he is here. Gary says that it seems like even an inept trainer can try his luck if he has a recommendation from a professor. Ouch. Also Gary thinks the same thing that I think. Go was not recommended because he is a good trainer. Gary says that what Go does from now on is what counts. Project Mew won't be so easy but Go should try to do his best at least. Gary then leaves. I have to say that I am both surprised and not surprised to see Gary again. I am not surprised because I fully expected to see him again because he is trying to join Project Mew which is and will continue to be an important recurring arc in the anime going forward. But I am surprised because I did not expect to see him again so soon and I did not think that he would show up randomly in an episode and that he would be on screen for less than a minute. But hey, it's always nice to see Gary, so I am not complaining. Now Go is of course enraged by what Gary said. After Gary leaves, Ash and Go approach the lab. They announce their presence and the door soon opens. A Mime Jr. is the first thing they see. Mime Jr. calls for its trainer who is carrying some boxes. Go says that he is here because of the email he got and the man has Ash and Go help him with the boxes, which they carry to a room that is filled with books. Inside the room Go finds a blurry picture of Mew. The man says that everything in the room is about Mew, but despite all the data they have on Mew, Mew is still a mystery. The man then introduces himself as Hodaka, the leader of Project Mew. Go greets Hodaka who says that Professor Oak told him about Go. Hodaka then tells Asahi who is waiting at the door posing like a total badass to handle the rest. Asahi gives Ash and Go an entire lecture on Project Mew complete with a visual presentation filled with pictures of Mew. She says that the team will search for Mew on Table Mountain which is located on an island. Asahi does not say what the name of the island is but I would like to think it's Faraway Island, the place where you find Mew in Pokemon Emerald, provided you have
have the old sea map, of course. This is the only place in the core series of games where you can physically find and battle Mew. Mew is normally obtained via an event, meaning that you get Mew directly, and thus you don't actually get to find it in the wild. As such, it would be fitting if this is the island where they will search for Mew in the anime. But the island that Asahi is talking about could just be an anime original location, like Cello Island, the place where Ash and Go found Mewtwo. This is more likely when you consider that Table Mountain is not mentioned in the games. Asahi says that Table Mountain is the largest mountain in the Pokemon world by surface area at roughly 40,000 square kilometers, and it's over 3,500 meters tall. She also says that the mountain is composed of sedimentary rocks that are 2 billion years old. All of this is impressive. Now Ash and Go bombard Asahi with questions, but she tells them to save the questions for the end. Ash says that Asahi is very strict. Asahi continues her lecture by saying that the search for Mew will take place during the one week when it switches from the wet season to the dry season, because there is heavy fog in the area during the wet season which makes exploration difficult. Asahi then wonders if Ash and Go have any questions. Go does want to ask about Mew, but Asahi says that information about Mew is confidential, so Go says that he has no questions. Asahi then talks about the recruitment process. Prospective members have to clear trial missions which test their knowledge as Pokemon trainers, their overall capturing skills, their orders and partnership during battle, and their teamwork with other trainers. It's unfortunate for Go that he is only proficient in one of these areas. A Mew token is given when a mission is successfully completed. The candidates that have the most tokens when the testing period ends will pass and thus they will join Project Mew, meaning that joining is not as simple as completing X number of missions. Instead, trainers are competing to see who can complete the most missions in the given time frame. I think that this makes things more interesting and less straightforward. Now, I do I wonder if harder missions award more tokens, which would add some strategy to the proceedings. Do you take a bunch of easy missions that award one token each, or do you take only a couple of missions that are difficult but they also award more tokens each? Though considering that Asahi gives Goal his mission, it's possible that applicants can't choose what mission they get. Though missions could still award tokens based on difficulty, so while applicants can't choose what missions they want, they can perhaps work their way up to the harder, more rewarding missions by completing several easy missions first. If every mission does award one token, then I think that this is unfair, considering that Gary had to get a feather from a legendary Pokemon, while Go only needs to catch a Pokemon. But considering what is revealed later about Go's mission, perhaps it is too early to judge just how difficult the actual trial missions are. Also, I do wonder if applicants can request to get a different mission if they don't like the one they get, or do they have to complete the mission they are assigned, regardless of whether they want to complete it or not, or regardless of whether or not they can complete it. Also, what happens if you fail a mission? Do you just get another one? Do you lose a token? So many questions are left unanswered. Hopefully they are answered in future episodes. Asahi then reveals that the team that will search for Mew will have five members and two people have already been selected, Asahi herself and a man named Surugi, who at this point in the episode has yet to be introduced, but we have known about him for a while because of previews. It's really no surprise that he and Asahi are part of the team. Since it will be a five-member team and two people have already been selected, there is room for just three more people. I think it's safe to say that both Gary and Go will pass, which leaves room for just one more person, who may or may not be an important character. It would be cool if this final member is another returning character from the past. Asahi then wonders if Ash and Go have any more questions. Ash wants to know if he can help Go, and Asahi says that teamwork is an important attribute that is evaluated in the mission, so yes, he can help. Asahi then opens a door behind Ash and Go, which reveals that the lab is flying. They are now over the snowy area of Mount Coronet. Asahi then gives Go his mission, to catch an Alolan 
Ninetales that has taken up residence in the area. Go checks his Pokedex, which tells him that Alolan Ninetales live in Mount Lanakila in the Alola region. So Go says that there won't be any Alolan Ninetales to catch in this area. As he says that she gave Go his mission, and it's up to him to decide what he will do. She could have told him the special circumstances that led to there being an Alolan Ninetales in Sinnoh, but instead she basically says it's your mission, you deal with it, even if it sounds like I gave you an impossible task. Go is not deterred by this, and he says that he will definitely catch Ninetales. The lab then lands, Ash and Go get ready to start the search. They are now wearing the explorer outfit from the crown tundra even though they are not in the crown tundra. Asahi tells Ash and Go that they have 6 hours to complete the mission. Ash and Go then begin their search with the help of some other pokemon. Ash has Dragonite and Gengar help while Go enlists the help of Caesar, Aerodactyl, Flygon and Mischievous. However after searching for a while they cannot find the Ninetales anywhere. Most of the pokemon can't find anything either and they are withdrawn after they express that it's too cold. I imagine that Dragonite Flygon and Aerodactyl have it worst since they are weak to ice, especially Dragonite and Flygon who have a double weakness to ice. Go Seasaur did not return like the other Pokemon though. Ash and Go soon hear Seasaur's voice so they follow the sound and they find Seasaur who found Ninetales. Ninetales is angry however and it attacks Ash and Go with Ice Beam. Go is confused because the Pokedex said that Alolan Ninetales have a calm demeanor and yet this one is ferocious. Go decides to battle Ninetales so he wants to know what type is effective against an ice and fairy type pokemon. Ash answers with steel type which is effective against both ice and fairy type pokemon. Seasaur the pokemon that found Ninetales and is currently out happens to be a steel type pokemon so Go uses Seasaur. Go proves here that he lacks the knowledge a trainer needs in battle. Caesar uses Metal Claw, which is a move he has never used before, to attack Ninetales, but Ninetales easily avoids the attack and it uses Ice Beam to free Caesar. Go ends up withdrawing Caesar, and it's interesting that Caesar is taken from within the ice, leaving behind the block of ice that was surrounding it. Caesar even leaves an outline in the ice. This is different from the games, where Pokemon that are frozen solid will still be frozen even if they are withdrawn and sent back out. Out. Ninetales then creates a blizzard and it banishes, leaving Ash and Go in the middle of the snowstorm. Go says that he must think of something, I guess because this is his mission so he has to be the one to think of a solution. But Ash ends up having to save Go from being drawn into the storm. That's two strikes for Go. Ash and Go are then shrouded by the blizzard as the episode cuts to the commercial break. Speaking of which, I want to point out that the classic who's that pokemon slash trivia segment that we get during the commercial break is replaced in this episode with eye catches of Ash, Pikachu and Go. I thought that this would continue to happen in future episodes but instead it seems to be something unique to just this episode, though it could be something that will happen in some episodes from time to time. When the episode resumes, Ash and Go wake up in a cavern. They soon spot a man and his Weavile. It turns out that this man saved Ash and Go from the blizzard. They are all now taking shelter from the snowstorm inside the cavern. The man says that seeing weaklings annoys him. He says that Ash and Go should leave once the blizzard stops. Go says that he can't leave because he has something important to do but the man interrupts him to say that Go is disqualified because if it wasn't for him, Ash, Go and their pokemon would have been dead. Ash is confused because the man said that Go is disqualified but Go says that the man is probably part of project Mew. Go says that he is Surugi. Surugi then tells Go that he should forget the name, Surugi. I guess because Go won't need to know this name anymore because Go is no longer going to join the project, because he is disqualified. Ash wonders if Go is really disqualified, while Go wonders why an Alolan Ninetales is here. Surugi answers Go's question only. He says that Pokemon hunters poached Ninetales for money but the plane they were carrying Ninetales in crashed in the area. This also explains why Ninetales was so angry when it saw Ash and Go. It is wary of humans. 
Surugi says that if he catches Ninetales, he will return it to Lanakila Mountain. After the blizzard ends, Surugi tells Ash and Gold to leave like they promised. Now they did not actually promise anything, so Surugi just wants them gone. Go says that he won't leave because he wants to return Ninetales back to its home as well. Plus, the time limit he was given to complete the mission is still not up. Somehow. Asahi said that Go has 6 hours to complete the mission, so I wonder how long it has been already considering that Ash and Go passed out for who knows how long, and after they woke up, they still had to wait for the blizzard to stop. Plus the time they spent searching before they passed out. The 6 hours should almost be up. Surugi wonders how Go will find the Ninetales without clues. Go says that he thought of something earlier. Maybe Ninetales wants to live somewhere that looks like Lanakila Mountain. So he points to a nearby peak that looks just like Lanakila Mountain. So Surugi decides to check it out and he tells Ash and Go to tag along. When they get to the place that Go had in mind, Ninetales is apparently not here, but Surugi points out that if you look closely, Ninetales is in fact here. It was just shrouding itself in mist. Ash and Go try to reason with Ninetales, and Go even throws a Pokeball at it, but neither approach works. So Go sends out Cinderace to battle Ninetales. Cinderace uses Quick Attack, but Ninetales counters with Dazzling Gleam, which knocks Cinderace back. Now Surugi is clearly watching Go. He is probably judging if Go is worthy of joining the project. Cinderace uses Blaze Kick next, but Ninetales uses Aurora Veil to protect itself. Cinderace then uses Spiral Ball, which breaks through the Aurora Veil and it hits Ninetales. Go throws a Pokeball hoping to catch Ninetales, but a sudden Ice Beam freezes the Pokeball. However, this Ice Beam did not come from Ninetales. Instead, it came from Regice, who I guess was awoken by all the commotion. Now Regice is encased in ice, so I do wonder how he was able to use Ice Beam from behind the ice. Surugi says that he did not expect to meet Regice here, and that Regice is an important Pokemon for studying the origin of Pokemon as a whole. Regice then uses Ice Beam, which Pikachu intercepts with Thunderbolt. Ash then says to Go, leave this to me. Go then approaches Ninetales and he tries to reason with it. Ninetales uses Aurora Veil to protect itself, but Go keeps trying, saying that he wants to return Ninetales to its home and that Ninetales should trust him. Eventually, Ninetales stops using Aurora Veil and it decides to let itself be caught. So, Go catches Ninetales, meaning that he completes his mission. It's nice to see Go struggle to catch a Pokemon. He had to battle Ninetales twice and he had to talk to it as well. He also had to earn Ninetales' trust. So, this is one capture that Go had to earn. Though admittedly it was a bit too easy to convince Ninetales. But hopefully this trend continues in the future, though I am sure we will still see a lot of quick, easy catches. Meanwhile, Ash and Pikachu struggle to defeat Regice and they are both knocked back. Come on Pikachu, you defeated a Regice in the past, so surely you can do better than this. But Surugi could not save the day if Pikachu defeats Regice, so I guess this is the reason why Pikachu is defeated easily. Surugi steps up to battle Regice and he sends out his single strike Urshifu. Now Ash uses his Pokedex which states that Urshifu is the evolved form of Kupfu who is also shown. The Pokedex does not always show evolution information, especially if no one inquires about it. So hopefully, this is hinting at the fact that Ash might get a Kupfu someday or at least that Kupfu will appear in the anime in the future. Regice begins to charge Hyper Beam but Urshifu uses uses Wicked Blow to demolish Regice in one hit. The Pokedex both in the anime and in the games say that Single Strike Urshifu believes in the one hit KO, and this is shown here. Not even a legendary Pokemon could withstand one hit from Single Strike Urshifu. So basically, we got one punch man over here. Surugi says that he will return for Regice later, and that Regice should behave until then, meaning that Surugi fully intends to catch Regice 
which makes you wonder why he does not just catch Ridge Eyes now, since he has Ridge Eyes on the ropes. It's worth noting that Ridge Eyes' appearance in this episode is probably a reference to Pokemon Platinum, where you can find Ridge Eyes in the iceberg ruins located in Mount Coronet. So they all head back to the lab, where Asahi says that she confirmed that Go did catch the Alolan Ninetales. She then thanks Ash and Go for helping Ninetales, and she even winks, showing that she is not as cold or as strict as she appears. She does have a soft side. I guess that she is serious when it's a serious matter, and she relaxes when it's okay to do so, once business has been taken care of. Asahi then reveals that the mission that Go completed was not an official mission. Instead, it was a test to see if Go is fit to join Project Mew. He can undertake official missions starting now. This is why I said earlier that the difficulty of the missions cannot be judged based on Go's first mission, because it's not an official mission. It's just a test mission, so it's probably easier than normal. Go is sad, however, because he is disqualified according to Surugi, but Surugi tells Go to shut up, that all he needs to say is whether he will join or not, and Go says that he will. I could have said this before during the cavern scene, but instead I will say it now. Surugi gives Gary a run for his money when it comes to being harsh and critical. If Gary joins the project, then I can only imagine how toxic the environment will be, especially for Go, who seems to be the prime target for both of them. It's fitting then that Surugi is voiced by Hiroshi Kamiya, who is perhaps best known for voicing Levi from Attack on Titan, a character that is known for many things, including his harsh and critical personality. I do want to mention as well that the two Pokemon Surugi has in this episode, Weavile and Single Strike Urshifu, are both Dark-type Pokemon, so perhaps Surugi is a Dark-type specialist, or perhaps he favors Dark-type Pokemon, which suits his personality. Also, fun fact, Surugi's name is significant for two reasons. First, Surugi is Japanese for sword, so this is a reference to Pokemon Sword. Second, there is a Mount Surugi in the Toyama Prefecture of Japan. This Mount Surugi is called the most dangerous mountain climbable in Japan, and it is recognized in Japan as the premier mountaineering peak in winter. Considering where we meet Surugi in this episode, I think that this is not a coincidence. So Hodaka enters the room and he congratulates Go. He then talks to Surugi about Regis and he reveals that Surugi is the member of Project Mew with the best score, which means that he is very skilled. Go wonders about what Surugi said earlier regarding Regis and its importance in studying the origin of Pokemon as a whole, but Hodaka does not answer the question, instead he says that he wants to know the origin of Pokemon, and for this reason he wants to study Mew who holds the genes of every Pokemon. Hodaka then wonders if Ash and Go would like to see the data on Regis that Surugi gathered. They both say yes, and that's the episode. Now I do want to point out that there is a new ending theme starting with this episode. This new ending theme, which is called Super Effective Type, is basically a trivia song, which is cool. I thought that this is the reason why there would no longer be a trivia section in the commercial break. They already have all the trivia they need in this new ending theme. But again, the eye catches are unique to this episode thus far. So overall, this was a pretty good episode. It is disappointing that Regis's appearance was so brief and its battle against Urshifu was very short. Yes, this matches the lore surrounding Single Strike Urshifu. This Urshifu is supposed to defeat its opponents in one hit, but I wanted to see a longer, cooler battle as this was the part of the episode that I was looking forward to the most. It was nice to finally learn some more about Project Mew and I like the system that they have in place. Applicants have to complete multiple missions in order to rack up tokens and only the ones with the most tokens can join the project. This is better than simply having applicants complete one mission and I am sure that Ash and Go will go on some amazing adventures during Go's missions. It was nice to see Gary again even if it was only for a brief moment and it was great to finally meet Asahi and Surugi who are both very cool 
playable characters. And I hope we get to see a lot more of them going forward. Hopefully we can learn their backstory. I especially want to know Surugi's backstory. How did he manage to catch a legendary Pokemon? And did he get his Urshifu as a Kopfu? Did he meet his Urshifu in the Isle of Armor? Does he have more legendary Pokemon considering that he was also about to catch Regice? I really want to know all of this. It was also nice to see Go struggle to catch a Pokemon, which is something that has happened before of course, but it happens so rarely that it is refreshing when it does happen. Though this time he did not get to keep the Pokemon he caught, which is kind of unfortunate. So yeah, overall this was a great episode and I can't wait to see what else Project Mew brings to the table. But that's the video, as always, leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.